Good evening everyone, this is Robert Jamison. Welcome to our online chess lesson for Thursday the 21st of March. Hope you're all well tonight. We've had a wet old day in Melbourne, but uh, that's all the better for chess. I have with me here in our uh, studio, Harry Phillips. Say hello, Harry. Hi. How are you tonight? Good. Well, now we normally start off by finding out a little bit about you. So, how old are you, Harry? Um, eight. Eight, okay. And where do you go to school? Elwood Primary. All right, and the big question is, you're Max's younger brother, aren't you? Yeah. Have you been able to beat him yet? Yeah. Excellent. So Harry has an older brother, Max, who's in our super group, um, who's a bit higher rated than Harry, so if he's getting the odd game off him, that's really good. Now, you went and played up in Ballarat, didn't you? Yeah. How did you do? Good. How many points? Um, two, but I could have won my first, but then I blundered. Okay. And I think you'd be one of the youngest two or three there, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's really fantastic that someone as young as you was playing in these open tournaments. As I can remember back to um, 1973 when we had an Australian Open in Melbourne. And those days, kids didn't play much in adult tournaments, but the youngest player was a 12-year-old boy named Ian Rogers. And he went on to become a grandmaster. Of it. So if you start really young playing against adults, you've got a much better chance of becoming a really strong player. Okay, so let's have a look at our puzzle today. This was quite interesting because this was a, a game played in the Noble Park Club Championships last week uh, on the top table between uh, Luke Lee and uh, Usain Stodgic, I think it was. Luke was white and basically Luke had a totally one game because he's a bishop up for not very much in the ending. So do you reckon you can get a win from here? Yeah. All right, now I gave you a choice of three moves. I said we could look at bishop c4, h4, or king g1. So let me just switch over uh, to another program. There we go. Now maybe they all win. Maybe some are better than others. Which move did you like? h4. All right, why do you, why do you like h4? Because it's starting with pawn push. Okay, is that pawn going to get through, or can the black king... Stop it. Um, it can. It can. No, I can stop it just. So you're going to play h4. Okay. What do you think black would do? Um, f3. Okay. What, what about king here? Right. Hitting the bishop. Can you have to move a bishop somewhere? Um, yeah. All right, and what would you do then? Bishop A2. Okay, and say, say I go here. H. You're going to run with the pawn? Uh, yeah. yeah, but I'm going to run across and capture it, aren't I? Um, Is that still going to be a win for you? What do you think? Yeah. Not sure? Okay. All right. Um, now, let's see what you guys did. Some of you went for King G1. Probably a few more went for H4. Uh, no one went for Bishop C4. Uh, let's have a talk to someone who's gone for King G1. So we'll talk to Justin and Julian. You there, Justin and Julian? Yes. All right. You guys like King G1, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Why do you prefer that to the other ones? What do you like about King G1? It doesn't lose a pawn. Okay. And what's your idea? What do you think Black will play in reply? Um, D4. King to D4 to attack the bishop. Okay. All right. Well, quite a few went for King G1, so I'll have a look at that in a second. So thanks, guys. All right. Now, the reason why this position is interesting is it's all about the colour of that square, the H8 square. What, why would I say that, Harry? What, what's the colour of that square got to do with anything? Um, because... Because... Because it matters what square the king's on. Uh, right. What about the colour of that square compared with the bishop? Um, the 
it's on a different. It's on a different colour to the bishop. Now, do you know how that might be relevant if you, if you've got a rook pawn and a bishop? Yeah. Can you tell me about that? Because um, you you need to try and get your king out again and clear sharp your pawn. Okay. All right. Well. I'll tell you guys the answer to the puzzle. So bishop c4 is okay, probably not the best move. Um, the best move is h4, running away with the pawn. And basically it's like, like we had, and now white can just bring his king up maybe to f3 or something, and he'll win that f pawn and he'll queen his g pawn. So it should just be a simple win for white. but in the game, White was coasting along, not thinking too much, and he thought, oh well, I'll play King G1, which is what a lot of you guys have said. Now, if you were black here, Harry, what do you think black should do? Um, King... King D4, like the other guy suggested? All right, anyone else have a different suggestion for black? Can you type in for the question? So not D4, but he has a really clever move here other than King D4. So if you think you can see it, type on the questions. Derek's gone A2, but I'll just take it. Ryan's gone King E2. Callum's gone F5, which is illegal because the pawn's coming down the board, not going up the board. Ah, one of you's found it, and that's Oliver. Let's have a chat to Oliver. You there, Oliver? Yep. All right, now your move, you want to play the sneaky move F3. Can you tell us why you want to play F3? Well, I didn't, I just said that because, yeah, I didn't really see any other good moves. And if I just went to A2, the bishop would just take, take if I, I didn't really, I thought the, the king was in a pretty good position, so I might as well move that pawn. All right, so, okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. So you got it by a process of elimination. All right, in actual fact, this is a brilliant move because white uh, pretty much has to take it. If he takes with the bishop, then the A2 pawn, the A3 pawn will just zoom down there. So he's got to take with the pawn. All right, now, Harry, here's your chance. You're black. You can draw it if you're really clever here. Can you see a really clever move for black that's going to draw the game? Remember, it's about the colour of that square on H8. A2. A2, correct. Okay, so the brilliant move is A2. The bishop has to take it. We take here. And now we're with, we've got a king and bishop and pawn ending, but it's a draw because all black has to do is he has to rush his king up to this corner. Let's say white moves his king up and moves his pawn up, and we'll put his bishop somewhere. So poor old white, what can he do? How can he get that king out of the corner? If the king goes there, check, king back, and if he leaves the bishop on this diagonal, it's stalemate. Or if he pushes the pawn, it's stalemate. So that's something I want you guys to remember. So if the square in the queening square of the rook pawn is a different colour to the bishop, and you can get your king there, you can get a draw, even though you're bishop and pawn down. So that's what happened, and poor old white in this game, he was bishop up for nothing, and he ended up having a draw. So I bet he was a bit disappointed with that. Okay, so let's move on today to our game. So we're going to have a look at one of Harry's games from Ballarat against Ethan Hoy, which Harry ended up winning. Uh, I'll just hide some of the moves here, so we can Play against the moves. All right. Do you remember this game or, or not? Yeah. All right. So you are black. Off we go. Sicilian. Why do you play Sicilian? Um, because Carl um, taught me to play the dragon. Okay. So you know it pretty well. Yeah, Sicilian's a good opening. Lots of grandmasters play Sicilian. So that's cool. All right. He plays knight c3. Close Sicilian. A little bit different. He played knight c6. All right. Then he played bishop b5. 
slightly unusual move. All right, are you scared of that move, or what do you think? No. All right, what do you, what do you want to do about that move? Do you remember what you played? Yeah. Okay, I played D6. Almost. You played E5. All right, what, what would be good about this? Why do you like having a pawn on E5 and C5? Yes, yes, so you've got good control of the centre. Excellent. So white played knight there. What do you think about that? It's a good move, bad move? Mm, not bad. It's just a galloping piece. Okay, looks like a pretty normal sort of move. Um, all right, so let's just go back. Now I want to ask you guys a question. Presuming you're white and you're looking at knight f3, is that a good move or a bad move? So in the questions, I want you to type good or bad, depending on whether you like it or whether it's bad if you want to do something else instead. So Nathaniel's going good, Bridges good, Oliver says bad, Justin says good, Ryan says bad, and we're getting a bit of uh, conflict. Michael reckons it's great. Oscar says bad. Joe says knight d5 instead. Okay. All right, well, first thing, Joe, we do not move a piece twice in the opening unless we have a really good reason. So knight d5, total waste of time. That would be a bad one. Um, let me see, who can we ask? We'll ask Oscar. You there, Oscar? There, Oscar? Yes. All right, you said knight f3 isn't so good. Why do you, why do you say that? Um, it's not really... Well, I don't think it's really doing anything because all the action's obviously on the other side of the board and I think uh, white should be more active over there. Okay, what move would you do instead? Um, I'd be thinking about getting the bishop out, the black bishop, so maybe moving a pawn forward or something to... So you play D3 D or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Thank you, Oscar. All right. Um, now, I don't know whether you guys remember, but one of the things I've often been talking about in these lessons is about trying to get two pawns side by side and planning for the middle game. You remember that, Harry? Trying to get you two pawns? All right, so what's the drawback of, of knight f3? What's the disadvantage of that? It looks like a good square for the knight, but there's a problem to do with the pawns. Any idea? Not really? Okay, all right. Well, the problem is, how's white going to get his two pawns side by side? He'd like to get the f pawn up here, but the knight's blocking it. He'd maybe like to get the d pawn up here, but black's got that square under control. So poor old white, he's developing his pieces, but he's not really planning for what he's going to do in the middle game. So a better move would have been to play d3, and then maybe next move, white could play f4. So then you see he's got his lovely two pawns side by side, so he's contesting the centre, and then he'd be able to back it up with the knight behind it. And then once he's castled, then the rook is going to be in a really good spot because it's on this file here, and we'll be able to open the file by swapping off the pawn. That's one of the advantages of having the two pawns side by side. Okay, so knight f3, I think that's a little bit of a boo-boo on his part. All right, you play d6, he played d3. He blocked the pin. Okay, and he chopped your knight. What do you think, Harry? Good move or bad move? I don't really care. So just a neutral move, not yeah. neither good nor bad. All right. We'll ask you guys again. Uh, what do you think of bishop takes c6? Is that good move for white or bad move? So type in the question, good or bad? So at the moment I'm getting lots of bads. Haven't had anyone say good. Thomas says it's okay. 
Lots and lots of beds. All right, we'll ask Bridgish. You there, Bridgish? You there? Oh. No. No. All right, well, the answer is it's a bad move. This is one of the other things I want you guys to understand is about pins. Pins are pretty difficult to get the hang of. So his bishop's trying to pin the knight. So if he's going in for the pin, that means he's got to be prepared at some stage to take that knight with his bishop. But if he does it now, you can just take him straight back and it's like loss of time for him. What he should do is he should wait until you hit his bishop and then force him to take it. So you've had to play this move here, which isn't very exciting. And he can meanwhile have played a good move like castles or something. So him just taking straight away before the bishop's attacked, that's not so good. And what, what's the other bad thing about giving up that bishop to the knight? Me yep, so now you end up with a piece on c6. And um, also, what about uh, the two bishops? Is that an advantage for you? Yeah. Yeah, you've got two bishops and you've got more control of the white squares now because you've got a white squared bishop and he hasn't. So that was a little bit of a boo-boo on your opponent's part. Okay, let's see what happens now. So he castles. Okay. Um, all right, another question. Whoops, what's happened there? I clicked to the wrong screen, sorry. All right, black to play. Looks like white's a bit ahead in development. He's already castled. He's got two knights out. What move do you reckon black should do here? So type in the question what you think would be a good move for black. Obviously want to develop something. So Callum and Bridges are going knight f6. Oliver's going knight f6. Daniel's gone queen d7. He's probably wanting to castle queen side. Nathaniel bishop e7. Most of the guys are going for knight f6. Joe's gone a5. Goodness knows why. Thomas gone f5. Do you like any of them, Harry? What do you think? I think probably... Um, what do you think? Maybe f5. f5. Okay. All right, tell me why you want to do f5. Because it's... Um, Two pawns side by side. Yes, that's good. And if he takes it, you're going to have to spend a little bit of time trying to get that pawn back. F5 is possible. All right, most of you said knight F6. Now, is there a problem with, with knight F6? It's blocking my pawn. It's blocking the F pawn. So it's exactly the same as the problem we said for white. So poor old... Harry now, how's he going to get his two pawns side by side because that silly knight's in the way? Now it might be possible that he could go for d5 instead. Um, the only trouble with that is that his, his e pawn would be unprotected and it's a bit harder to organise. So I think knight f6 is a little bit of a boo-boo. So were it me, um, I think I would probably play g6. So my idea is I want to get a setup. I want to have my bishop on this lovely long diagonal. And now I don't want to put my knight here. I want to put my knight here. So that sort of has the double advantage. So I've stopped him putting his knight on d5. And once I've castled, my f pawn isn't blocked and I can go there. I've got the two pawns and it's all beautiful. Okay, so that's what I want you guys to think about when you're developing your pieces. Don't block your pawns, make an allowance so you're going to be able to get two pawns side by side and contest the centre. Anyway, Harry didn't do that, he did knight f6, he got pinned, and you went g6, that's possibly okay. Bishop e7 would have been alright as well. He jumps in there, so he's having a double attack on your knight, so you have to take him. He takes back. And you unpin. All right. Um, how do you reckon you're going here, Harry? Um, okay. Okay. Uh, you think you're better, or he's better, or it's pretty even? Pretty even. Okay. I think I'd 
I think I'd probably rather be you. Um, a couple of things. He's got double pawns, so that's a little bit of a liability. Um, also, can you see another advantage you've got? What about these pawns here? Yeah. You've got sort of more pawns in the centre, so you're controlling a bit of the centre. And your king's going to be nice and safe with that bishop and knight protecting and everything. So I think you're a little bit better. All right, let's see what he does. Now, poor old White, he's got to think of a plan. What can he do? Because he hasn't got the two pawns side by side. All right, so guys, let's say you're White. What move do you think you should play here? Because you're going to have to try and get some play somehow. So we need a move for White. So Thomas and Greg are going h3, which is sort of like passing. Joe's going rook e1, Ryan queen d2, Justin rook e1, Oliver's going b3. Brigesh wants to take on f6. Some of you are going c4. There's lots of moves there. All right, what, what do you reckon he should play, Harry? Well, um, I think he should play like Queen D2, yes. Queen D2 is probably not bad. Um, I think Bridges played, whoops, what's going on there? Okay, let's try again. Uh, Bridges played Bishop takes Knight. That will be bad for the reason we just stated with the, with the pin before. You, you don't take a pin until he attacks you and forces you to, to take it. So not bishop takes knight. Um, queen d2, putting the queen and the bishop on the same line, that would be pretty good. Uh, what he actually came up with, I think uh, oh, Callum suggested it. He played c3. What's his idea there, do you think? Um, I thought I was trying to protect the pawn if I move my queen out. Or, or trying to get his queen into the game to check. Okay, I think he's probably trying to get d4 and get rid of his double pawns. So that's probably not a bad idea. All right, so let's have a go, see what happens. You castle. Yep, here he goes, he's d4ing. Okay, all right, so this is a bit critical. He's, he's uh, trying to get rid of his double pawn and he's attacking our pawns on e5 and c5. Um, all right, what do you guys think Black should do here? This is a pretty critical sort of position, so type in on the question what you'd like Black to do. So some of you are saying e4, Rijesh likes rook e8, Thomas likes e4, Oliver likes b5, Justin wants knight g4, which loses the queen. Oscar, queen a5. Benji, queen b. Oh, there's moves everywhere. h6. Gosh, what do you reckon, Harry? What, what should you do? Um, maybe. The most popular one was e4. What do you think of that? Would that be a good one? What, what would he do then? You'd have to move his knight, wouldn't he? Yeah. So he'd go there. So he's now attacking our e-pawn. Which isn't defended because our bishop's pinning his knight. Would this be good for you or good for him? Good for him. Yeah, because we're going to be in trouble. He can attack that e-pawn three times. So we might be struggling to defend that. All right. Um, so which, which one did you choose, do well, you think? I think that's why... I think I played queen d7. Okay, I think, well he's attacking your e-pawn, so you actually played queen e8, which no one guessed. So tell us about queen e8, why do you want to go there? Um, so, if it's... so you protected your e-pawn now. Yeah. Is, is that the only reason or is... To get out the pin as well. Yeah, so you're not in the pin anymore, so that's okay, and you protected your e-pawn. But there's a problem with Queen E8. What, what, what would be the problem? Um, Is that where you want your Queen? Is that a good square for the Queen? No. no. Why not? 
um, the kids are currently on my rock and roll. Very far. And mm, what about your rooks? Sort of, not protected. Well, it's, it's blocking your rooks in. Yeah. How, how are you going to get this rook out here? Because the, the silly queen's in the way. All right. So this is a possible move, but maybe not the best move. Because we should be. What question should we be saying to ourselves when we want to work out where to put our bits? Um. What is your opponent um, planning to do? All right. So we know they're threatening our yeah. our e pawn. All right, so let's say instead of queen e8, let's say we um, oh, hang on, I'm in the presentation mode. One second. Right, let's say we took here, and he took back. Now we should be saying, where do I want my pieces? So you want to get out of this pin with the queen. So where will be a good spot for the queen? Um. Five, maybe. What about B six? Oh. See now, this is pretty pretty cool because you've got you've got your queen putting pressure on this pawn down here. You've got a bit of pressure over here as well, and your knight has got a bit of pressure on this one. So queen there. I mean, he might he might go takes takes. Now he's he's in, in strife with his D pawn because we're going to with rooks and knights and stuff attacking his d-pawn and he's got to worry about his b-pawn. So that probably would have been the best one. All right, so we put our queen on the um, bad square, unfortunately. So here he goes, takes, takes. Right, now he's annoying our e-pawn. So we've got to drop our knight back. Okay. Um, so white to play. So he's obviously thinking there, what can I attack? And he goes for bishop f4. So I want you guys to type for me, is this a good plan or a bad plan? So bishop f4 for white, good or bad? Oliver says good. Rujesh and Ryan say bad. Thomas bad. Benji thinks it's okay. Daniel badish. Callum bad. Joe says it's tricky. Just about all the others are saying bad. What, what do you think, uh, Harry? Good or bad? Okay. Okay. Why is it okay? Because um, it's taking his bishop off good squares, but it's um, trying to trick me to take it, and he's putting pressure on the pawn. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't take it because you'd lose your queen for a rook and a bishop. Okay. But is it threatening anything? Is it threatening to take that pawn on e5? But it's protected three times, it's attacked three times, so you've got to cover it, haven't you? Yeah. So it's not really threatening to take it. So what you've got to say is, is this, uh, is f4, is that a good spot for my bishop? Because he's got to constantly be worried, hasn't he, that, that you don't sort of move your queen and then you'll be threatening to take the bishop. Yeah. So maybe it's not a good spot, it's just like a trap. He's saying, Harry might take me and I get his queen. So playing for traps, unless you're in a lost position, is, is a bad policy. So you've got a good move to, to get out of it. Do you remember what you did? Um, no. no? All right. You did F6. Right. So now you've totally protected E5 and his bishop's sitting there just looking stupid. So that was good play by you. All right. So then he moved his queen out. What do you reckon he should do here, Harry? Um, probably like F. Queen F7 or something. So you're thinking queen F7? Maybe, maybe. Uh, probably the best move would be knight here. Now, why, why would this be a good move? Can you see what we're threatening here? Yeah. So we're attacking his queens. So let's say he swaps the queens. What What's happening now? Mm. Is this good for you? Yeah, because I can take Because you threatening to take a silly bishop and you threatening to take the pawn. So you've got him in a double attack. So that'll teach him to put his bishop on stupid squares and try and trick you. So that would have been the best one. Um, 
I think you actually played queen there. So now you're threatening his bishop. Um, all right, so he's got to move the bishop. All right, so question for you guys. I'll give you a choice. He's got to move that bishop on f4. Should he put it on g3 or e3? Where should white put the bishop? g3 or e3? Callum's going e3. Oliver's going e3. Oscar g3. Justin e3. Bridges g3. It's even Steve at the moment. Nathaniel, Daniel, Daniel E3s, Kevin E3s, so E3s hit the front. Ryan wants to put on D2. All right, Harry, where do you reckon we should put it? Um, E3. Why E3? Because if it's there, it's sort of trapped, locked in. Yeah, we say, what is the best square? Where do I want my piece? So E3, it's obviously putting pressure on this pawn, and it's still on this nice diagonal. But he didn't do that. He made a mistake. He put it on g3. So now you hit him with knight b6. So that looks pretty good because you've got him in a double attack. You're attacking his queen and you're attacking his pawn twice. So it looks pretty good here. So he puts his queen there. Yep, we're a pawn up. Fantastic. All right, he hits our queen, we go and hide. All right, so we've got a pretty nice position. We're a pawn up, so you, you're going okay? You happy with this? Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's pretend we're white, guys. White to play, what can he do? What move would you make for white here? So he's looking around, and I think he's struggling to find a plan. So Oliver's going B4. Uh, Justin likes d2, Callum likes knight c4, which is illegal because we're looking for a move for white. Bridges goes queen a3, b4 from Daniel, queen d3 from Joe, illegal again. I think they're struggling. Rook d3 from Joe. What do you reckon, Harry? If you were white, what should he do? Um, you can't really threaten anything, can you? Because you've got everything protected. Yeah. All right. So when you can't threaten stuff, what what sort of things do you do to your position? Yeah. yeah even if you make little moves, like you could just say, "I'm going to play eight, uh, pawn to h3, so I don't get back rank checkmate," something like that. That little move to improve your position. Uh, oh, actually, Daniel's got the right answer. Well done, Daniel. So white should probably play b3. So the idea there is next move, hopefully, he'll play c4. So he's got a nice pawn chain, and his queen can come back into the action, and he's got a bit more control. So b3, a little move like that would be OK. But white didn't do that. He couldn't think of anything to do, so he thought, OK, I'm going to sacrifice. So he went and did. Knight takes e5. So is this a good sacrifice? You're scared of this, or is it a bad sacrifice? Bad. Bad. It's a shocker. Piece for two pawns. All right. Uh, so we sacrificed a piece for two pawns, and we were a pawn up already. So we've now won a piece for one pawn. Yep, piece for a pawn. Okay, black to play. So you guys type in what do you think Harry should do here. So he was trying to open it up for his rooks and attack. Black to play. Joe's going. Mm. It's black to play, Joe. Not rook d6. That's white's move. Daniel's going. Bishop takes bishop. Oscar's going. Rook e8. Sam's going. Rook e8. Thomas going. Rook e8. Joe's going. Rook d8. Okay, but most of you guys have seen the move, which Harry didn't see. You see a good move for you that you missed? Um, wait, um, rookie eight. Rookie eight. Is that a good move? What's that? What's that so good about that? Um, it's uh, putting pressure on the bishop. Yep, so you have to do a swap maybe. But there's an even better move. Cast your eye around the whole board. Look at all your pieces. Look at what you can attack. Look at stray pieces you can threaten. Can you see an even better move? 
thing. No, not no. C4. Yeah, you could do knight C4. Fork him when that bishop. That would have been cool, but you missed it. So you did a swap, swap, and guess what you missed here? <laughs> the knight C4 again. You could do knight C4 again. It would have been a rook up. Oh, okay. But instead of that, you went queen A4. What was your idea there? You remember? Swapping queens. Swapping queens, yes, because you've got a double attack going now because you're threatening to swap queens. And if he moves his queen, you're also on his rook there. So we've really got to swap queens. Uh, but this is an example of where probably your coach has said when you're ahead, swap pieces. Carl's told you that, I guess? Yeah. yeah, well, that's a general rule, but rules are made to be broken. So if in this position you've got a better move that forks his queen and his rook, that's obviously more important than just doing a queen swap. Anyway, so we, we missed that one. So let's see. So he was forced to swap, now you're attacking his b-pawn, and he did a fairly silly thing, he just forced you to take his c-pawn instead. So he's given you another pawn, very nice of him. He goes rook up there, alright. Uh, so Harry's doing really well here, he's now a whole knight up. What do you guys think he should play? So type in for black, good ideas for black, what can he play in this position? Uh, we've got knight e2 from Ryan, which just loses a knight for nothing. Thomas is going rook f7. Sam's going rook d8. Oliver's going knight takes a2. Bridges knight takes a2. Nathaniel knight takes a2. Looks like most of them want to take this pawn on, on a2 here, Harry. What do you think? What, what, do you, what would you want to do for black? Another free pawn? You'd be a knight and a pawn up, or what? Um, B6. B6? To defend the, so you're looking at defending your C pawn? Alright. So let's say you've decided on B6 or knight takes A2. Before you make the move, what should you say to yourself? Um, not really. What will he reply? So you say, okay, I'm going to play b6, but before I do it, just in case it's a really terrible blunder, I'm going to ask, what is he going to reply? So have you asked yourself that question? No. no. Not really? Okay, let's have a look. So if you play b6, what would he reply? Um, what would he reply? Wouldn't he jump up here? Double rooks on the sevens? Yeah. Threatening checkmate in three? And now you're in real strife, he might get you in perpetual check on the seventh rank. So even though you're a piece up, you might struggle to draw it. So this shows where you've got to be careful, not just knight takes a2 or anything. Always ask what is your opponent going to reply. But fortunately, you came out with a good move. You threatened to swap rooks. So he can't double on seventh. And if his rook moves away, your rook would zoom down here and get a back rank checkmate. So he's pretty much forced to swap. Okay, now you're threatening the back rank checkmate. So he got out of that. Okay, now I'll give you guys a choice. So Harry can either protect his pawn on c5 with b6 or he can take this pawn on a2. Which would you prefer? So type in b6 or knight takes a2. So Daniel's going b6, Joe's going b6. Derek, Daniel, other Daniel's gone knight a2. Thomas wants to go rook check. Helen wants to take on a2. Most people like b6. What, what do you like, Harry? Um, um, b6. Why do you like b6? Um, because you're um, pushing your pawn up a bit and you still get the pawn swap. Yeah, well, the general rule is. Um, like he's losing, so he wants to swap pawns. So if you take his pawn, he takes your pawn. There's two pawns he doesn't have to worry about. There's one less queen you can get. So if you're winning, you want to keep the pawns on. So if you were to play b6, now you're still threatening knight takes a2, and you've got him in a bit of trouble. So b6 would have been the best one. 
you actually grab the pawn, he grabbed your pawn. So just a little bit of a boo-boo. All right, now you went there. Not sure why you're going there. So he attacks your pawn. You run away. He attacks the other pawn. So he's got his rook in a nice aggressive spot, which is what we tried to do at the ending. You defended it. Uh, um, but I mean, you're still winning comfortably because you're knight and outside pass pawn up. He does a silly move here. Pawn up. What should you do here? Okay. Take it. What did you do? You attacked it again. <laughs> you in time trouble or you can't remember what happened there? Um, Using lots of time this okay, so you might have been a bit of time pressure, yeah. Because now we get to swap another lot of pawn. So he's got one more pawn off you. So that's a little bit okay for him. He goes to the seventh rank. All right, so what's your plan now, Harry? Um, turn from yeah. So your plan is to try and get this pawn through. So we always try and play where we have an advantage. So your advantage is obviously extra outside pass pawn here. So that's what you should be doing. All right, now let's see what he comes up with. He's checking you, so that's okay. You're coming forward, he's checking you. You're hiding in there, okay. G4, oh, okay. That looks a bit scary. Is that a worry for you or not? Um, it is since I was playing um, someone <laughs> and I was a queen and a rook up and Mm -hmm. and what happened? Rook and I got you got checkmated, all right. So is this threatening checkmate or anything? Um, not really. Not really, okay. So, oh, okay. So did we have to go G5 or, or we should ignore it? Ignore it. Yeah, we should just push this pawn up. That would have been the best and he's not threatening anything at the moment. But you panicked a little bit and you went there. Now, rook there. Do you reckon that's a good move? It's okay. Um, all right, let me ask someone. Uh, we'll talk to Joe. You there, Joe? Yeah. Hello. Hello. What What do you think of Rook Rook A five? So he's gone from A seven to A five. You reckon that's a good move for White? Not really. Why not? Well, maybe he's thinking he can pin the pawns on the fifth rank, but it's not doing much because black will just push the B pawn anyway. Right, okay. So if I was to say to you, rooks belong behind, can you finish that sentence? Past pawns. Correct. Okay, so what he's done is he's put his rook in the wrong spot beside the past pawn. Obviously he would have been much better off to put it behind the past pawn to try and slow it down. So he doesn't understand where to put his rook. So you do. So well done. Thank you very much, Joe. Okay, so he's made this funny move. So we push our pawn, and he's done it again. You can keep pushing, can't you? Yep. Oh, okay, you didn't do it. You moved your king. Okay, you could have kept pushing. Would have embarrassed him a bit. All right, you moved your king. Now he's gone back to checking you. He's checking. All right, so you're letting him take that H pawn. Does that worry you? Um, not really. Why not? Because I'm going to get left. Yeah, yeah you're going to get the B pawn before he can get any counterplay. So he just takes it. Push. Here we go. He's going for more checks. He's putting his rook in a better spot there. So he's going to get your other pawn, but who cares? So we're pushing past. Check. All right, now, million dollar question. Where should your king go? To C6. So to C6. Why do we go to C6? If it checks me, it's blocking me. All right. Wouldn't it be better to go to C5? Oh, yeah. Then he can't even check you? Yeah. Next time we get a queen? Yeah, so that would have been better. You went to C6, so he, he did a few funny checks here. So I'm not sure where your king was going. <laughs> and you could have put the rook in the way. But eventually, I think we get the hang of it. Yes! All right, and it's all over. Red Rover, you just win because you've got a queen and he resigned. Whoa. Well done. All right, so that was a fairly long game. All right, now let's just look back over the game, what we might have learned from the, the game. Uh, so you remember the opening? Yeah. 
Right, so the key thing I wanted you guys to remember is don't always put your knights on f3 or f6 like we had in this game because you've blocked your f pawns. So that's very important. And also we had that silly move where he, he just took on c6 before his bishop was hit by pawn to a6. Um, what else did we have? And we had the tactic where you put your queen on e8. Wasn't a good square for the queen. And time pressure, so it was a tricky game, so you probably spent a bit of time. And then you kept missing that knight c4, didn't you, where you're forking his queen and his rook and his bishop and stuff. So it always pays to sort of glance around the whole board, uh, see if there's something you've missed. And the other thing is to, before you make your move, ask what is he going to reply, because we almost didn't get those double rooks on the seventh, which would have been a pain, like if you had to play b6 or something. Anyway, that was a good win. Well done, Harry. Thank you for coming along today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's lesson, and I look forward to seeing you all next week for our last lesson for this term. So good night, everyone.